G'day, Chicken Train here for the review show of the APS first round. We weren't going to do one. We're only going to do a preview show, but due to popular demand over the weekend, we've been asked to do one. So we aren't quite ready to go this week, but we will be next week. The girls will be in this Thursday night to tell us who the hottest player of the round is. And in the meantime, I'm going to go through the scores and give you the best players and the nominations. Thursday night will be preview night. Sunday night will be review night. So lock it in. Caulfield Grammar played Brighton. Grammar Brighton had a narrow win, 10-6, 66 to Caulfield, 7-11-53. Of course, there was a bit of the girls' hysteria down there when uh, Christian Salem, the Melbourne player, turned up and did a bit of a walk around for the crowd. The best for Caulfield were Lucas Webb, potential draftee, bit of a Scotty Penelbury, had 11 handballs and 14 kicks, was very good. Daniel McKenzie as well, he did very well with 11 handballs and 16 kicks. Theo Thompson as well was very good. And now for Brighton, well, Tommy Fisher and Josh Clayton, they had 22 possessions each. Future draftees, Nick Pavlov, a year 11 boy, he had 19 possessions. Tommy Garner, Harry Hill and Connor, uh, McLeod were very good. Best on ground, in my opinion, was Lucas Webb. That was pretty unanimous down there. The highlight of the game though, Jack Tooley for Brighton Grammar, the long goal, 50 metres out, three quarters time soaring, got the crowd up and about. So don't forget, let's find out who the hottest player is later in the week when the girls tell us. The nominations for Caulfield, well, that is Daniel McKenzie and Theo Thompson for hottest player of the week and for Brighton, Nick Pavlov and Connor McLeod have been nominated. On to Geelong College, they play Wesley, uh, 14-690, defeated Wesley College, 7-7-49. Best players for Geelong College, uh, Joe Maishman, a very athletic midfielder whose agility and speed allows him to find the footy and can get forward to kick goals. He was very, very good. So was Zane Cordy, the brother of Ace, Bulldog Ace, that is. And of course, he was very, very strong up forward, etc. Blake Southerly, year 12, was very good and had many contested possessions throughout the whole game. He was very good with his ball use. Angus Wiley was crucial in shutting down some of the Wesley forward line players. Young gun Tom King, year 10, showed what he means business. Uh, the hottest players of the round, well, nominations are Tim Hosking across half back. He's very, very good. And also Max Dabeen, uh, he's a footballer we've got to keep our eye on. And Nick McGuan, uh, he's very good at kissing girls, I hear, and he's been nominated, and the girls are very keen to find out more about him later in the week. Best players for Wesley, well, Tristan DeReal across half-forward flanker, year 10 debut, uh, kicked a great goal over his head for a snap. Uh, Jimmy Bazzani running off half-back flank all day. Dylan Swan was also very good around the ball, along with Luther Lyon, they're the co-captains for Wesley. They battled hard all day. Uh, Tristan Van Driel, he's been nominated as the hottest player of the round, so the girls will have a big decision to make on Thursday night. Now, unfortunately, didn't get a lot of information from Geelong Grammar, so get your act together this week, Grammar. Uh, they were 19-14-128, defeated Carey 5-5-35. Geelong Grammar, no details as we stand at the moment, but for Carey, Crocker and Archer were very good. Sammy Bailey kicked two goals, and he was also nominated for the hottest player of the week. The girls have got a big, big decision to make. St. Kevin's versus Harleby. Well, the big boys came out to play at this one, and I was down there. I had a good look. Some of the better players for St. Kevin's, I like Jackie Holden, Jody uh, Degori, and Jack Wallace were very good. Jackie Cairns, yeah, he goes all right. And Tommy Alex Popolis, he was probably in the best, in my opinion. His highlight for Tommy, when uh, he snapped one from 40 metres out, that was very, very good. Special mention for a couple of year 11 boys, David Dassey and Harry Hodges. They were very good in debut for their first game for the first. Hottest players, well, Jackie Holden's been nominated down there. So is Joshy Josh Wallace and David Dassey. So the boys will be pretty excited when the girls come to a verdict on Thursday night. For Halebury, Kieran Collins, a year 11 boy, he caught my eye down back. Uh, Cameron Paulson, he also caught my eye, year 10 lad with great skills. Hamish Brayshaw snabbled three goals from only six touches. And then Captain Lockie McPherson, well, he didn't let the team down. He had a massive crack, Lockie. Nominated for the hottest player of the round, and the ladies' man is Cameron Paulson. Apparently, he's got the locks going, so I look forward to the girls' decision Thursday night. Now, the co coordinate Edelston Cup, of course, the historical and famous cup that's played for between Melbourne Grammar and Scotch. Melbourne Grammar, two years in a row, won nine. 14-68 defeated Scotch, 5-5-35. Best for Melbourne, Tommy Wilkinson, Hugh Goddard, did very well up forward, Hughie Goddard. Connor Lappin, very, very good. Ed Langdon, Gus Borthwick, Ed Vickers Willis, all very good for Melbourne Grammar. They look like they could be the team to beat again this year. Hottest pl pl uh, player nominations for Melbourne included Tommy Wilkinson, yes, the girls like him, and Sammy Kelly and Taylor Quirk. So girls, think about those boys when it comes to Thursday night. For Scotch, the best were Robbie McDougal, Dimitri Pananos, the captain, did very well, and Mark Rivett was very good. Hottest nominations for Scotch or Richard Goody and Max Kelly. Well, that's all from the Chicken Train for this week. Don't forget, Thursday night, the big preview of round two coming up, and my girls will be in to tell you who the hottest player of the week is. All the best. Toot toot!